box store and try to let you get to have a little entertainment. Thank you so much, Grace, and I certainly do appreciate this opportunity. I thank the committee for this opportunity uh, to come and share my viewpoints on why I want to be the representative for the Browns County School Board uh, uh, for District 2. My family moved to the Valdosta area in 1972. And I began my career in the Lyons County School System way back at, when I was high school. And for those of you who remember, you had to cross the street to get to the other side of the road so you could get to your other classes. So that's how far back I go. And uh, I, I did graduate from Lyons High School in 1981. I did subsequently graduate from Valdosta State University in 1986, finally with an accounting degree. It took me a little while uh, to get that accounting degree. Now, upon uh, graduation from college, I was fortunate enough to receive an offer from a Fortune 500 company uh, at the corporate offices. So, as you can imagine, I was thrilled to be so young with such an opportunity. And I worked in the corporate world for a couple of years, and in the interim, I got to have a child. And it was beginning to be difficult to balance the corporate life and family life. And so, uh, the more I thought about it, uh, I was into some milestones at home, so I had the first step, first two, first. First word. So I decided I needed to change careers. So I began looking. In 1989, I was hired as staff accountant for the city of Alaska. I really never thought about a career in the public sector, but after a year or two, I began to feel that even though I was not an elected official, I was giving back to the community in my own way. And then a few years later, I decided this is truly what I wanted to do, but I needed some more experience. You know, and I sat in the back corner of City Hall not seeing anybody, not talking to anybody. So I needed to get out and get some experience. So in 1996, I was named the Director of Financial Services for the uh, city of Thomasville, which was great for me because Thomas was not requiring me to move. And by this time, we had another child that was in the Lowndes County School System. So I knew for four years our children remained in the county school system. I thought that was very important. Then, fortunately again for me, in the year 2000, finance director for the city of Alaska to retire. And I was able to come back and uh, apply for the job, got it, get accepted right away, didn't even have to think about it too long. And in 2007, I was named deputy city manager, and that's the position that I hold today. Now, it's not a glamorous 25-year career by any means, but it's something that I'm proud of and uh, enjoyed every minute of it. Now, like I said, uh, I am married. I'm married to former Judy Cothran. We have two kids. Our son Landon graduated from Lowndes in 2007. Our daughter Victoria graduated last year in 2013. But the coolest thing is this. I got an almost two year old grandson that's going to be the coolest little Viking that you have ever seen. So I, really I can't do this without, a, without uh, saying that. You know, since the mouths of my family on the school board, folks just come up and ask me, Mark, why are you running for school board? Well, you know, it's hard to make, to make an answer that sounds a little difficult. For me, it's just quite simple. It's about our kids. It's quite simply about our life. What I mean by that is what I envision for our school board is a school board, is a school system where our kids' success and achievement is, they, they are achieving at a level where it is normal practice and it's not the exception. But that's what I envision. I'm ditching a school system where there's such a firm foundation laid for our kids that wherever they, whatever they pursue to do in the future, whether it be college, tech school, military, administrative job force, they're shining beacons of whatever they decide to do. So that's why I'm running. That's what I'm passionate about. Uh, I got that from the Lowndes County School System, and I feel that's something that I can get up. I can get back. Now, with that being said and done, it's easy to stand up here and say that. But a lot of work goes into it. A lot of the school board members' responsibilities are budgetary in nature. As I just mentioned, I've got a 25-year career in public finance. So I think that sets me up perfectly for those type of responsibilities. And I can get the ground running, which I think for District 2 is very important because we don't have an incumbent. All three of us are new to the, to the area. So I think that the budgetary metrics that's very important. I know the difference in a public dollar and a private dollar. I've been doing it every day and doing it for 25 years. With that public dollar, you've got to stretch it, shake it, turn it upside down, and get every penny that you can. Uh, because there's no liberties that can be taken with that public dollar. So I'm very well aware of that. 
You know, and I think really, it's really simple for me, is uh, what I found over in my career is that, that you budget and you expend in the good times, just like you do in the bad times. <coughs> that way, no pun intended, you got a rainy day reserve to pull on. And perhaps, when the tough times roll around yet, we won't have to have teacher furlough days. Technology can be a day. You've got to prepare for the future. And I think that I'm very strong with that with my background. You know, another, uh, another area that is a school board responsibility are policies. Much of the policies are dictated from the state, mandated from the state. Not a lot you can do, but I'm the kind of person that I may not can do anything about it. But if I don't like it, I'm going to let you know I'm going to keep talking to you until I can you hear me. And uh, policies are necessary absolutely to the structure of an organization. But policies many times can create an inefficiency where you think you're creating efficiency. And uh, to me, sometimes what I've learned my lesson is really when it comes to policies, less is more. Uh, because, so like I said, sometimes you're creating a bottleneck, an operational thing that you're creating an efficiency. So uh, that's why I view policies. Another reason we're going for school board is there are many things coming up with high that I think the school boards are going to be very interested in and discussing. One is the common core principle, I'm not going, and guidelines. The state legislature just passed this the last day of the session. It's, it's an interesting topic. It's been debated. Uh, it's not new by any means. It's been introduced slowly to the school system. Uh, the governor just signed it to, to implement last day of legislation. And here's how I look at that policy. One of the things that, uh, I'm not going to get on a soapbox, I promise, but one of the things that, when I look at a policy, I look for that, that it's, it's a causing an unintended consequence. And I will never support a policy that takes creativity away from a teacher and out of the classroom. And what I mean by that is this, is that sometimes we put so much focus on a standardized test that teacher almost believes they have to teach to that test. And they can't, and, and, and teachers are professional. They work hard, they go to school for years. We need to trust their judgment and their creativity and getting our kids to learn. It's not all about that standardized test. And there's students, on the other hand. Students have so much pressure on them to do well on a standardized test. I've experienced with my two kids. And I, so it makes me wonder, are we teaching kids to memorize the material just to do good on that test? Or are they actually learn? And as we all know, learning is a layer. You start with the basic layer. Each year, you add to it. Well, that student memorized it the first year just to do well on a subsidized test, a standardized test. What do they do the next year? Do they just keep missing it? So those are how that's how I approach policy. Any legislation like this is going to have good, and it's going to have not so good. But that's how I view it. I would never, I think, yeah, support anything that takes that creativity out of the classroom. And I'm not saying that's what Common Core does. I'm just saying that perhaps is an unintended unintended consequence that I would like to be a part of to make sure that does not happen. Other things that are coming down the pipe for school systems is a new look at charter schools. Um, there's a new way, there's some new ideas out there for charter schools that I think that school systems will be looking at and I've been keeping up with that over the years and it's very interesting and would love to be a part of uh, that discussion. I may have exceeded my time but I'll conclude with this. Uh, the thing for my thing for my campaign this year was <clears throat> our kids are future. Perhaps it's archaic, perhaps it's cliche, but it's just simple, and that's to me that's what it's all about. Our kids, their future, which affects our future. So we've got to be doing everything we can to make that firm foundation for our kids, so they can go out in the world and be successful. You know, when I entered this race, I told people that. You know, I entered this place with no preconceived notions, no agenda other than what I've shared with you this evening. And I would not, I promise you this, I would not be willing to accept the responsibility of this position if I did truly not believe uh, that I can play a pivotal role and continue the excellence of the Lowndes County School System. Thank you so much.